What is going on, friends? Welcome back to Fuel Friday, where me and my good friend, Dr. Harrison, break down a topic that we think will help you move forward in your health journey and help you build your happiest, healthiest life. And we break that topic down in 15 minutes or less. Yeah. So yes. far, we're doing pretty good on the 15 We have minutes. been doing pretty good. Uh, so, Dr. Harrison, we got the, the timer going here. Uh, what's the topic today? The topic is... The interweb between gut, bacteria, and um, fiber, I guess, um, and how it plays a role, how they all work together to uh, promote digestive health and overall health or compromise health and overall health. Yeah, 100%. And I'm really excited about this because I feel like this is like the new trendy thing that's starting to happen that I'm seeing where everybody's talking about gut health and how important it is, which is a good thing because everything stems from the gut, right? Like if your digestive yeah. gut health is off, things aren't going to work the way you want at the end of the day. Um, so I guess when we want to break this down, my first question for you is when we talk about gut health, the thing that has interested me the most is this bacteria, right? We have this bacteria living in our gut. It's alive, it's active, it's doing these things, but for the audience, as we break all this stuff down, what is, what's the purpose of this bacteria? What is it doing? Is it helping with immune function? Is it digestion? Is it like, what, what is going on there? Yeah. Where do we start with it? Right. There, yeah. There's so much, there's so much. That's why I kind of specific about bacteria and fiber and, and a little bit of longevity. I always tell people to, and, and the whole gut thing was trendy in the functional medicine world 20 years ago at the onset of functional medicine, when it came to be a thing. And then it, then it kind of died down. It wasn't a focal point. And now kind of kind of pop culture or society is jumping back into it. Uh, I think they're just a little later to come to the game than the world of functional medicine because that was kind of the first onset of functional medicine of, of what we focused on. Uh, so, so I always tell people, a gut bacteria <clears throat> is more than just the gut. Humans are just a stack of organized bugs in nice order and, uh, and they run the body. That's all it is, that it, we're just bugs. And unfortunately, <clears throat> these bugs are very fragile, just like any kind of bug that we see in our environment. So <clears throat> emotional problems, pathologies, infections, colds, stressors, um, of course, environmental chemicals, everything and anything in our world that isn't perfectly natural compromise <clears throat> our biome. Interesting. And then when our biome becomes compromised, we see all sorts of terrible things happen to our bodies. Ultimately, uh, earlier death and chronic illness. Yeah. So, so that's that's the world of 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 bugs. And how does how did bugs affect us? Well, absolutely everything and anything affects our bugs. Uh, I always talk about biodiversity is the goal. So diverse cultures, not necessarily exclusively quantity, but the quantity of diversity. Got that it. is the healthiest bacteria or uh, biomes, if we will. Well, for an example, for what you just said, and I know we're talking in like the millions or even the billions here. Yeah, um, multiple just billions, the, trillions. Reason. If we were just talking on a scale of one to 10, it's not so much just having 10 being the right number, but having 10 different types. That's of right. Things. That's right. Yeah. And this is, this is really what we know about the bi or one of the things we know about the biome. Diversity is critical. And, um, and then, and then primarily, and then secondary quantity, and and I, and to understand the biome or to understand the effect of the biome, e everything wants to destroy, it, including age, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So our bacterial diversity to understand someone's health and vitality is understanding their bacterial diversity. As it shrinks, everything else starts to fall fall apart in the body or become more falling falling out of homo homeostasis, yeah. order and structure. And uh, uh, the the country, we, we know the answer to this one already before I even finish the question. <laughs> the country, the nation who has the lowest bacterial diversity in the world is the United okay. States. And then one of, the, one of the mammals that have the lowest, other mammals that have the lowest bacterial diversity in the animal kingdom is the squirrel. And we aren't too far away from a squirrel here in the United <laughs> States. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, That's so you can look this stuff up. It's kind of, it's kind of frightening. So... That's how bad it is here. And uh, can I ask you one question about that? Because that's interesting to me. So we're close to a squirrel and a squirrel has the lowest diversity. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm curious if you know 
what animal has the most and should we have the most or is there that's a very good question i don't know i don't know what 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 other animals have the most we do know that bacterial diversity is closely related to plant diversity so plant Mm. consumption um and and in the western world we don't have much plant consumption you know i don't know standard american diet might be a side of uh of coleslaw and there's our there's our and and there's our veggies yeah yeah so bacterial diversity is dependent on plant diversity not animal diversity not fish not not none of that and grains grains do not promote bacterial diversity it's plant fibers that that are non-grains especially modern day grains so and 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 if we in to try to kind of explain this as our bacterial diversity comes down not only does our our order and homeostasis skin skin is closely related to bacterial diversity the more bacterial diversity you have the better your skin will be and regeneration mitochondria we do know mitochondria is closely related to the biome and pretty well everything is related to the biome so mitochondria is is energy production Mm -hmm. if mitochondria doesn't have the antioxidants it needs to be able to exist and and be highly functioning the antioxidants so there's a mitochondria a little energy generator in our cell and then farther downstream from that or i should yeah or upstream from that is antioxidants antioxidants are coming from foods and and workouts and all these other things antioxidants help support our mitochondria then above antioxidants is biodiversity so biodiversity is bacterial diversity you have all these different bugs and then when you eat some food a plant the bacteria eat that plant fiber open it up and there's a present inside of the of the plant and that present is called a short chain fatty acid now that short chain fatty acid is the fuel for the bacteria so the bacteria can expand and grow in hopefully diverse places so if you take turmeric if you take turmeric it is absolutely useless unless you have enough bacterial diversity to open up that turmeric convert it into an antioxidant that the body can use to further hand off to the mitochondria so the mitochondria has a little bit of of support so it can produce atp which is energy yeah Wow. So now, we're it's talk- more complicated than that. That's just an example of turmeric, for example. So with this, you, you talked enough diversity. Are there certain types, and I'm sure there's so much research being done on this right now. Are there certain types of this bacteria that break down certain types of fiber, like you just mentioned turmeric and stuff. So is it like, are there certain types of fiber you can eat that if you don't even have this certain bacteria, it's almost impossible to break down? Or is it just an amount at that point? Or Yeah. Um I guess it depends on 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 the nutrient you're looking for. So a lot of nutrients or antioxidants in in the form of coming from fibers, preferably foods, but even some supplements, you can't you can't acquire them. So glutathione, you don't need bacterial diversity to be able to absorb it in the form of say a supplement. Um, any kind of plant based antioxidants, uh, you you need that bacterial diversity because otherwise it's useless. So someone has uncontrollable celiac or Crohn's or these disorders, I never am going to burn up their budget on, on antioxidants until the stomach is relatively stable. Then, you know, there's enough diversity that they should be able to get benefits of those antioxidants. But when it comes to certain nutrients, like high concentration, vitamin A, C, E, D, K, like these vitamins. Yeah. You can get benefit from them. If that's answering your question. Yeah, um, I think so. And so with that being said, so let's say somebody does struggle with, they don't have a, enough variety of bacteria. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is a twofold question. One, how would somebody find that out that they that's one of the issues? And two, how do we get the diversity to be there? Right. Because if we, once we realize that we don't have this enough variety that we need, where, how do we know what kinds of things we should do to get that variety there? Okay. So one of the obvious well there's a few obvious answers here but uh, there's a couple obvious uh symptoms and indicators that you don't have enough bacterial diversity one you have more and more and more sensitivities to foods Mm. so and that sensitivity could be my stomach hurts that sensitivity could be i have some brain fog that sensitivity could be uh, bowel movements are different. That sensitivity could be acid reflux, that sensitivity. So any GI issue with a food is guaranteed a sensitivity. There's other, other symptoms, but that is one thing to think of. 
energy drops, that can be a sensitivity to food. So what happens when I say sensitivity, think of it as intolerance. I don't, you know, intolerance to the food. And a lot of food sensitivities and intolerances are due to, and this is the way I like to explain it, imagine your, your stomach is just this little room, big room, and then you only have two little bugs there. And they're like, okay, I wonder what our human's going to eat today. And then some weird plant comes down and, and that's not their specialty. So every bug has its own specialty. These are like union workers. They only do one job. <laughs> and so since some plant comes in, they're like, I don't know what to do with that. You know, bug A says and bug B says, I've never seen anything like that. So then the food sits there and what happens is it rots, putrefies, and it gives off gases And any food that doesn't get digested because bacteria digest, are, are digesting these foods. Any food that isn't being digested at the right rate or relatively quickly, it off gases, putrefies, and it adds it adds to inflammatory load and it will create digestive issues and being lethargic and all sorts of weird things, even rashes and skin disorders. Yeah. So, so um, that's one indicator of not having enough bacterial diversity, lack of tolerance to foods and environmental factors, environmental so, allergens. Going off of you saying that, because we, you just kind of mentioned that this, these bugs, these uh, bacteria help with the digestive process um, would, and this is for the audience to know, there's these digestive enzymes. Does that correlate? Are those the digestive enzymes or is there another thing? that's Another digest- layer. Yeah, it's another uh, layer. So digestive so, enzymes play a role yeah. into it. Bacteria those play a role. Correlate. So if you have low, uh, this biome, uh, this, uh, these bugs, right? If those are low and not diversified, would that affect the digestive enzymes as well? Or do, mm-hmm. are those two things correlated? That's a Curious. good question. Um, the process of digesting plants or animals or whatever we're consuming, there's different systems in place. Some of these systems work like assembly lines where one system breaks some of it down and the next and the next and the next. And then some some foods, they just have only need this piece in the assembly line. So they can work in harmony and, and you know symbiotic to be able to break them down. But if you can't take a bunch of digestive enzymes and compensate for low bacterial diversity. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's quite a few stages. Digestion starts in the oral cavity just with saliva. Um, yep. and then, so, so those that's, so a lack of increased food sensitivities and reduced digestive tolerance are a common indicator of back of not enough bacterial diversity. Another one is overall nutrient status down. And these are people that take lots and lots of supplements. And if they, they stop the supplements, everything falls down. Mm. Uh, so that would be a second thing that they're, you know, they're propping their body up with a lot of external nutrients because they need them in high, high concentrations uh, because they're not getting the nutrients from their food because they don't have the bacterial diversity to break down those plant fibers. So those would be digestive challenge, food sensitivities, and then, and then, um, Hopping uh, off the yeah, mm-hmm. those would be three major ones to know that you don't have enough bacterial diversity. People start realizing like, oh my God, I have all these food sensitivities to certain types of foods or lots mm-hmm. of foods, whatever the case is. So you realize like, okay, maybe I got to start taking this gut health thing more serious, what would be the protocol? How would you figure out like you struggle to digest these plants or you digest chicken or whatever it is, right? Like how would you start to diversify? It's a good question. Yeah. Because, because the goal is to be able to have, to be able to consume all these plant species. So you can pull that short chain fatty acid and diversify your, your biome. So then if you have a big army of bugs sitting in that room in your stomach, they're like, it doesn't matter what comes in. They can eat it up, pull the nutrients from it. And then you don't have that inflammatory load or that food sensitivity or that bloating. Bloating is a common one here. Yeah. So, so that's where you want to get, where you can handle a bunch of plant diversity. But if someone doesn't have any bugs or, and you eat a bunch of plants, say, I'm going to build up my, you'll just be bloated and distended and diarrhea. And it's just going to get really bad, really fast. So the goal is to be able to get plant diversity and start to build up your army as much as you can. You need it. It's complicated. Like, don't have a one. You need you need energy for this. You need um, anything to promote energy promotes digestion. You need enough of other pieces in the chain of digestion that can kind of help with this. So you need enough digestive enzymes. You can bypass. You can actually bypass the plant fibers to some extent and consume short chain fatty acids in the form of su- supplement. Okay. Do not fall into the lie. Let's say it here, and it's all over the research now. Do not fall in the lie, take a bunch of probiotics and everything's better. Never, ever, ever. It's like 
you should have trillions of these little bugs in your stomach and, and you take like five in a probiotic and say, yeah, we're saving the day. <laughs> Not really. Sometimes you can see bacteria and help the development of it. I only use probiotics now in my office and I work with chronic, I only use probiotics in my world with chronic illness if if it's very specific, so there's certain probiotics for urinary tract health that can help, that can get rid of UTIs, just a certain strain of probiotic. You can, there's actually probiotic strains that help with weight loss. Really interesting, a lot of research in that. I never say it's a silver bullet. You know, weight is never a silver bullet or some probiotic, but it can be a key part of the story. So I use probiotics now if it's a specific problem and I'll use a specific strain based off in the research. Only time I use a comprehensive probiotic to try to combat antibiotic use. That's the only time I use it. But you short chain fatty acids. And this is would fall into the world of what we call a prebiotic. You know, you take prebiotic foods that feed the bacteria. If you take a prebiotic food or a prebiotic supplement, usually um, that's already digested fibers, that's just the food source for the bugs, you, like sauerkraut, all that, that's a prebiotic. If you, if you take that, if you take sauerkraut and stuff like that, and you have the SIBO or this bloating situation, you, most people, it lights them up, not yeah. everybody. So short chain fatty acids in the form of a supplement can be a great way. Digestive enzymes can be a great way to start and, and digestive enzymes specifically with hydrochloric acid because most of your digestive enzymes are, are digestive power is due to hydrochloric acid. So mm -hmm. that can be a supplement strategy to get into this. And then the second piece is slowly and cautiously and gradually start to increase a little bit more plant fiber and a little bit more diversity. Yeah. And don't tolerate five days of bloating, don't tolerate five days of, of diarrhea. You might have one or two days of a little bit of a hiccup as yeah. your bugs are trying to break down this, but that would be the first steps in it. In my world, I'm looking at food sensitivities. I'm looking at all these other things. And then, you know, the rate of improving this goes up tenfold versus versus yes. 100%, 100%. So we are at our 15 minutes, but I'll leave you guys with this. Of course, if you ever need to get in contact with me or Dr. Harrison, all of our information is always below filled with information here. You guys were always happy to help. Um, but I'm already going to say this. So we have to do this next week. Okay. I'm going to leave, okay. I'm going to leave everybody on a cliffhanger. Okay. It's been some podcasts that I've listened to. There's this new thing coming out to help with the microbiome where people are making capsules of people's who have healthy guts, their poop, and they're taking them and helping. So I'm not going to say yes, no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. next week yeah. we have to talk about if eating talk about it. Fecal poop. transplants. We'll talk oh, about fecal we're transplants We're going to talk about week. eating people's poop next week. We have to. We have to talk about it. Well, you guys. And we're also, we're going to talk about uh, camel dairy. Camel dairy. Mm -hmm. It fits right in with this. Okay. So, I'm excited. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Well, yeah. you guys, I appreciate you. Please don't forget to share the episode <laughs> and we'll see you next week.